Hey, and uh, welcome to a very special Big Dave show and tell today. And uh, once again, it's all about cicadas. And uh, just next to me here, it, well, I should do this. No, this. There we go. <laughs> it's uh, my good friend, uh, Matt McGlasson, Dr. Matt McGlasson. And uh, he lives in Fort Mitchell, as I do. And he works at Noah's Ark Animal Clinic there. And uh, of course, he's a veterinarian. Good morning, Dr. Matt. Hello. Thanks for having me. I told everybody you look like Ant-Man. So, uh, Ashley, Chelsea, what do you think? Paul Rudd? <laughs> yes. He does, doesn't he? He definitely does. Yeah. Someone, commented, someone commented on one of my videos last week, and they said, you look like Paul Rudd if he actually aged. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I love it. Well, you're a great guy. You have a lot of fun on TikTok and stuff, but we wanted to talk cicadas with you. And uh, I tell you, anybody that's watching right now uh, can, uh, can comment you know, on here. And we've got people say already saying good morning, everybody, Crystal and, and Kim and Mary. So if you have a question about your pets and cicadas, uh, Dr. Matt is here to answer any and all of them. But uh, if you want to start off, the floor is yours, Dr. Matt. Anything you want to say just to get the ball rolling on this? Sure. Um, I would say, like, if there's one big takeaway message about cicadas, I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm getting calls every day from friends and acquaintances saying, my dog ate a cicada. Is he going to die? This is terrible. I read online that they're poisonous. They're going to they're going to cut open his intestines and all this stuff. And I would say ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're not going to hurt anything. So if your dog eats four or five cicadas, no big deal. Um, the only time good. you're ever going to see an issue is if if you have, you know, not to pick on certain breeds, but, you know, like a lab or something like that, that's going to go out there and eat 10,000 of them you know, in a day. Like with anything, if you overindulge in anything, they might get some GI upset, vomiting, diarrhea, that type of thing. Well, but. that's exactly what Pam Morris just commented on Facebook. She says, my labradoodle keeps eating and vomiting them up. Any suggestions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's got to be messy. Yeah. I mean, if you have a dog that's just totally obsessed with eating them, and I, some of them are, then you either just need to go out with them on a leash and take care of them, or you can even put one of like the the Hannibal Lecter uh, basket muzzles on them when they go out so they can't do anything. But like I said, most of them aren't going to eat that many. I've seen our bigger dogs eat a few here and there. Uh, my little dog here, she's scared of them. She won't eat them at all. So um, no big deal. Usually. What's that? Wait, hold the dog. What's the doggy's name? This is Winnie. <laughs> she's so cute. Oh, she's cute. She's my assistant. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, Crystal, uh, uh, Crystal Smith wants to know why do dogs eat grass and then throw it up? Um, you know, a lot of people think that dogs eat grass because they're missing some kind of nutrient in their diet or something like that. But actually, that's not true. Dogs just like to eat grass. Um, dogs are like like wolves. They're actually, you know, omnivores. So they'll eat some some plants and things outside. So some dogs just like to eat grass. And sometimes if they eat too much, it might make them throw up. Um, sometimes it seems like if a dog has an upset stomach, they might go outside and eat a little bit of grass and throw up. But in general, it's nothing to worry about. Okay. Ashley says, my biggest question is when will the cicadas be gone? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that it can take as long as six weeks for it to kind of, you know, really fade away. We're I don't still think seeing the big wave of them yet still. I mean, this is the, uh, yeah. as they say, the sacrificial wave that the dogs. I mean, pretty soon there's going to be so many out that the dogs and the birds and nobody, they don't care anymore. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. how the cicadas win. It's in numbers, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's getting, it's getting pretty crazy by us. I don't know how many you have, but yeah, it's starting to get loud and yeah, they're just everywhere right now. Yeah, they're coming out. Uh, actually, uh, Stat, Chelsea, yeah. you guys, well, I know Stat and Chelsea have dogs, and what or, and so does Ashley now. What were you guys wondering? Well, mine was actually not about my dogs. Um, <laughs> I have pet chickens. So <laughs> I don't even, do you, have you seen a pet chicken come into your Noah's Ark there? I, I don't do chickens. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So hopefully they'll be all right. I think well, they'll, they'll be probably, fine. Do you think the cicadas, are they trying to eat the cicadas? Cicadas are just now coming out um, where we are in Alexandria. So I we haven't had a deal with it yet, but I'm preparing, you know, as they're running around. 
they're definitely going to be out there and they try to just eat whatever. Oh yeah. And they pick something up and then all the other chickens run after the one thing. To, I'm like, there's lots <laughs> of grass here. You don't need that one piece. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll hurt them. Okay. All right. Chelsea, Chelsea's got two great Danes, a golden retriever. She's basically got the Cincinnati zoo at her house. What do you wow. have Chelsea? <laughs> Well, actually, my one Great Dane is the one that eats everything under the sun. So mm -hmm. she's the one I'm worried about the most. So I think in trying to keep her in the house is going to be a challenge. But she's also the one that wants to be outside all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's big, she's big enough that she'd have to eat a lot, a lot to be cause any <laughs> issues. So I think you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> any okay. questions you have? I mean, it can be about cicadas or pet stuff in general. Dr. Matt McGlasson here. Uh, from Noah's Ark Animal Clinic is joining us on this Big Dave show and tell. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, you shouldn't have any problems, maybe just some blockage or vomiting from uh, overeating the cicadas as far as dogs go. Uh, what about cats? I mean, cats are, I mean, these are like toys for cats, basically. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the cats mostly just like to play with them, you know, and, and torture them, you know, like cats like to just torture things. <laughs> but, um, same thing. If a cat eats, I don't think cats are going to eat many. They might eat one or two, but um, like I, there's quite a few around us. I've not seen any animals come in sick from cicadas yet this this year. So I'm sure your outside cats will have a lot of fun chasing them around and that type of thing. But I wouldn't worry. There's way more things to worry about with your pets than cicadas. Mm -hmm. I had a little dog question. Yeah, because uh, I got a little chihuahua that's almost smaller than your little assistant there. Yeah. And I can see a little anxiety now in her about going outside. The, oh, yeah. the grass is alive. I have a <laughs> big old wave right now. No idea. And she doesn't want to go in the grass right now. Normally she's like outside play. Yay. Is there anything I could do for her anxiety? I mean, I would just kind of comfort her, go out there with her, that type of thing. If it gets, if it gets super, super bad, you could talk to your vet about a medication, but I don't think that would be necessary. They're just more sensitive to sounds than us. So they can hear all this. And they say that like, you know, the week or two leading up to when they came out, the dogs could actually hear them, you know, burrowing under the ground and start making their way up. So they're, they're more sensitive to that stuff. And uh, same thing, like these little dogs are just really sensitive to everything. So, um, you know, she, she's not wanting to go outside as much as well, but we'll just kind of go out there and sit with her, give her a treat when she comes back in, try and make it a rewarding, positive experience. How uh, big your chihuahua? What's that? I said, how big's your chihuahua? Uh, I think she's up to nine pounds. I okay. don't know, she's, she's tiny. Little, little thing, yeah. yeah. Kim Griffin Baker has a question off of Facebook here. It says, any suggestions about getting kittens when you already have a guinea pig? Should I worry about the guinea pig? He is five years old. Uh, no, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, especially if you've if you've got a you know a, a little kitten that you're bringing into the house. You just introduce them slowly to the guinea pig. They'll be fine. I mean, the guinea pig is going to be as big as the kitten, you know, to start out. So I don't think he'll hurt him. If you brought in a big adult cat that had never been around them, I might be careful that, you know, he might try and, you know, try and hunt it. But, uh, you know, guinea pigs are big enough that I think you'd be fine, especially with a kitten. They'll get used to anything. Yeah. Now, Dr. Matt, have you yourself eaten a cicada? I haven't. I've got, you one. Going to. Oh, don't you? I've got one right here. Well, let me, let me, oh, it's a live one here. I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. I'm going to bring you into the, uh, here we go. <laughs> oh. So there you go. Yeah. And is that, that looks like, is that a female or a male? I have no idea. Dr. Kritsky said the males have hollow abdomens and the females aren't hollow in the abdomen because they have the eggs in them. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not as I will. I'll Venmo you five dollars if you eat that right now on camera. <laughs> that needs to be on your next TikTok video. <laughs> that's not a that's not a bad idea. I mean, you guys, but you're viral on TikTok. It's amazing because <laughs> you have uh, two hundred and eighty six thousand followers on TikTok. That's awesome. Yeah. You, I mean, that's TikTok famous as our kids. Uh, Dr. Matt and my kids all go to school together there at Beachwood. Uh, that's as they say, TikTok famous. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. It's ridiculous. Um, we need a cicada video. Yeah. My kids came home from school one day and they were like, you're on famous, famous birthdays. There's some website called famous birthdays and they were all talking about it at lunch, but I, I don't know. Well, how that happened. You're it's following on TikTok. Yeah. Well, I love it because you do all the time. Uh, the kitten videos, you do a thing about uh, making biscuits where the kittens yeah, yeah. do this you know, on the, on our cats do that. And you have biscuit making videos that are just phenomenally funny. 
and have so many likes and stuff on TikTok, and that's what got you going there. Yeah, it is. Um, so like right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, my daughter had been asking for a kitten forever. And so I, we got her a kitten and um, we did like that as a video on TikTok and that got pretty big. And and then this this cat is just obsessed with doing the biscuit thing all, all the time. So we started this video series on there of, you know, she was like, she was like being overworked by Jimmy Dean and then she started her own biscuit company and it, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> it's super, but it but went, that's, it what takes crazy. Off that's what the rid ridiculous <laughs> things like that, you know, won't you please help? You had the dramatic yeah. music and the kitten making biscuits and exactly. it's like you know, overworked and underpaid making yeah. biscuits. I mean, that's what was funny about it. So any more questions? We got Dr. Matt for a couple of more minutes. If you have any questions for him, anything pet, vet related that you need, uh, he can answer if it's about cicadas or not. Uh, go right ahead and use the comment section here on Facebook. But um, it, I mean, the, so five to six weeks, just uh, in, so, in summary again, certain dogs want to eat more, but they're probably going to be okay. Just don't let them overdo it. Exactly. Yeah. You're you're going to be, you know, have way more issues with your dog eating socks or your dog eating sugar-free gum or your dog getting into the garbage, you know, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. the, the cicada thing is just going to be, uh, you know, it, it's fun to talk about. It's a cool phenomenon that's going on, but I don't think it's going to be real significant with the health of pets, honestly. Uh, somebody says, uh, uh, Alicia says they're very good fishing bait. I have heard that. I haven't tried. Yeah. Just yeah, I've also, heard the fish like the whiter, the better. The, really? You know, like the, uh, the, the brand new ones. When they come out of their shell and they're still soft, the fish can see them better in the water and they, they like it soft. I mean, okay. I'll have to just try it says, I, I, my dog keeps eating the cicadas. What happens if they overdo it? Basically, what you said, maybe the Hannibal Lecter muzzle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say, you know, if, if your dog is overdoing it, if they are vomiting, diarrhea, and not eating, if that's going on for longer than 24 hours, take them to your vet just to be safe. But that's going to be a really, really tiny population of pets. All right. Before we let you go, Doc, um, what's the strangest thing you've ever had to remove from a dog that they ate that, that just had to be surgically taken out because they ate it and couldn't pass it or do anything with it? Ooh. There's got to so, be some weird things. Yeah. So this is this has happened at clinics all over all over the country. You hear about it everywhere. But I didn't do it myself. But another associate did. Um, removed underwear, females' underwear from a dog. But then when they came to pick up the dog in the underwear, the wife said, "That's not my underwear." Oh. Oh, oh stop. Yeah. So that was bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my. I like that. There's some other yeah. things I can't say on the air that, that we've really Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. For sure. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Matt McGlasson from uh, Noah's Ark Animal Clinic. Thank you guys. And uh, and this will live in infamy on Facebook. Anything else <laughs> you'd like to add before we go about pets and cicadas or anything? Um, just coming from the veterinary community, a tip out there. If your dog ate your weed, just tell us. We're not going to call the cops. We just want to know what's wrong with your dog. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll end with that. <laughs> this is why Doc MCG is famous on TikTok. Thank you, Dr. Matt McGlasson, for Thanks, working guys. on Paul Rudd and being a wealth of knowledge for us. Let's be your assistant one more time. Yeah. Let's show her up. There we go. Oh. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, and, uh, guys. See you around the neighborhood, Matt. All right. I'm sure I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.